All right, I have heard your cries for help. I've been avoiding this lesson for I don't know how long, uh, quite some time. Uh, and it's on tuning drums. And the reason I've been avoiding this lesson is because anytime you put something out like this, people immediately go, well, that's not the way I tune my drums. Well, I was told, my drum teacher tells me to do it this way. Well, I learned this way. Well, I, and there's a million different ways to tune drums and a million different people have a million different ideas, okay? And that's what make this, makes the drums so cool is we, <clears throat> we don't have like a keyboard that it has to be a set middle C. We can, drum, we can tune these drums however we want, right? You can do it Elvin Jones, Tony Williams style where it's a little bit more high end, a jazz type setting where you need more response. You can do low end, you can make it go you can make it boom, you can make it thud, we can deaden it, we can dampen it, whatever we wanna do. So I wanna dispel a couple myths first before we even get started. Myth number one. Don't be scared of tuning your drums. There's this fear like you get the drum, right? And you, you maybe take it to your drum teacher and you're like, dude, I gotta, I gotta tune this drum, right? He says, okay, well, let's sit down to it. So he does his magic thing, you know? You take it home and you set it up there and you go, now, don't touch it. And your friend's going, you're like, no, 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 don't touch it. It's, it's tuned perfectly. It's tuned perfectly. Well, news flash for you. As soon as you hit the drum, it's going to a different tune, okay? You may not be able to audibly hear it, but you, that impact is going to affect the tuning of the drum. Colder air, warmer air affects the tuning of a drum. Why shouldn't you leave your drums in a hot car or a cold car for that reason? Because it's wood, it contracts, it expands. This is a head, it expands, it contracts, right? That's why you don't wanna leave your drums in cars and whatnot. Now, myth number one is you're scared to tune your drum, okay? We get this thing and we feel, I think the fear comes from you're, you're not certain you're gonna be able to get it back to that tuning once you, once you get rid of it. Like it's never possible to get it back there, right? Let me go ahead and tell you, it is possible to get the tuning back correct. You just follow some steps, okay? Uh, myth number two, muffling is bad. Muffling is not bad. Muffling's fine. I've played in studios, I've played with drums like this with no muffling. I've played with drums with moon gels. I've used a newspaper, actually set it on half the drum to get the desired effect. I've put a towel over the drum I've put tambourines on the drums. There's no rules here, okay? So in other words, if you're having trouble getting rid of an overtone, I have a snare, man, and it's got this bark. I call it a bark. Whenever I hit it, and man, to tune that thing out of there is impossible. So you know what I found? One small moon gel placed right, it's gone. Two moon gels makes it sound like 80s arena rock, right? One moon gel's perfect though. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to know, don't be scared. We'll get some steps to actually getting your drum, to drum in tune. And then myth number two is muffling's not bad. You can muffle it if you want to, okay? Now, coated versus pinstripe versus single ply versus double ply, all of this goes back to personal taste, okay? Double ply is gonna be a heavier, thicker sound. You're not gonna get near as much um, articulate tone out of it. So like if you're in a jazz setting, maybe a funk bebop setting, you don't want a double ply head, okay? Pinstripes, Remo pinstripes, that's gonna be a double ply head. You would want more like a coated ambassador or a single ply, just a single ply uh, Weather King head. So that, that's, that's kind of the, the plies. I don't, I don't delve too much, Ever, all of my knowledge comes from actually just playing on the gig and finding out what works and what doesn't work. Um, so you've got your drum, you have your new drum head, and now you're gonna go about putting it on the head. What you wanna do is take this rim off. I'm not gonna go through all these steps, but I'm gonna talk you through these steps. We're gonna take the rim off, dust everything, clean it real good. Now, when you bring this rim off of here, whatever order these lugs came off, in other words, if you take this off and this lug is here and this lug is here, you wanna be sure if you can and put the rim back on in that same place, in that same order. So you want this lug to go back over here. Okay, because this is wood and over time it gets worn and this hoop sits a certain way on there. So if you turn the hoop, all of a sudden it's, it's different, okay? So it, if you can, if not, it's not a deal breaker. Again, you can adjust. Now what you wanna do is you wanna put your head on the drum and you wanna put the drum rim back on there, okay? Lightly tighten the nuts with your hands, the bolts, then you wanna take and act like you're doing CPR on your drums and actually press on the drum. Do it four or five times. And what this does is it cracks the drum head and it seeds it, okay? So that cracking is actually it forming to the drum and I can't, 
I can't get mine to do it because this is a bit of an older head, but when they're new, you can actually seat them on there. Then tighten it a little bit more, seat them some more. Now, there's the myth. Do I tune uh, lugs diagonally across from each other or do I tune lug to lug? For me, the way that it works best is I go one lug and I go directly across the drum and I tune that lug. Then I go to my left of that lug, in other words, clockwise, I tune that one and that one, and I know somebody's gonna make a comment about going counterclockwise. Go whatever clockwise, counterclockwise you want to, doesn't matter to me. And then uh, you go continue that way, hit the last one and that one. This drum has six lugs, okay? So I don't tune here, here, here. And the reason that is, is because if you tune here and you tune here, this side of the head has a completely different sound than this side of the head. So you're not gonna be able to, as you go, get a real round and overall sound. You're gonna get it done over here and then you're gonna have to go, well, this one sounds different. Now you have to start all over again, okay? So once your head's seated, and again, after it's been tuned for a, a day or two, you'll actually come back and you can press on it some more and seat it a little bit more. Once you're done with that, then we're gonna get to the tuning. You can see I've got this, I'm gonna hit my symbol right there. That's part of the tuning, you always gotta hit your symbol. Um, I'm gonna put this, I have this one head muffled. I can. I use this on a drum throne sometimes. I'll put it on a drum throne, but uh, a, a drum has two heads. So it's got two tones that combine to make the sound of the drum, okay? So you wanna muffle one of those heads to get the actual sound of the top head or bottom head, whichever one you're tuning. After you have that muffled, you can hear it sounds like crap. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna hit about an inch away from the lug, okay? And we're actually gonna go around, I'm gonna let you hear what that sounds like. Now, these two lugs sound similar. This one and this one sound vastly different. Right? So what you wanna do now is we wanna get all of our lugs in the same tonal area. So what I do is I hit, I find the one that I want my drum to sound like. I like this one right here, closest to me. I like that tone, and then I sing it to myself. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Then go to the lug across. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a little lower, so you're gonna slightly tighten it. Then, again, we're going to the left, right, clockwise. Ooh. We gotta go up with that one, okay? So again, we hum the tone. Mm -hmm. It's very professional to drop your drum key. You're gonna think I'm crazy for humming this. Those sound very similar. Now go to the one across there. Go up just a touch. Okay, those are in close range of each other. We don't have to be scientifically exact. If you wanna be scientifically exact, you should get a drum dial because that's gonna be the only way to do that. Um, it is always hot in this room whenever I'm shooting lessons. That one's lower. All your bandmates will love you because you start singing. This one's just a touch lower. All of those are in the same general family, okay? Now, once you have all those tuned within the same general family, you're gonna get a decent sound out of the drum, okay? Now, the only thing is, is do you want the bottom head slightly lower, slightly higher, you want it even, that sort of thing. So, that's my drum now that I've tuned it. Um, and then you go on to the bottom head to, to see about that. Now, there's some, Excuse me, there's some things that took me a while to learn about the bottom head. There's, again, here's another myth. There's no wrong way to tune the bottom head. 
It doesn't have to be above the top head. It doesn't have to be below. It doesn't have to be even. There's It's personal preference. If you go even with the top head, if you tune it to the same note as the top head, then you're going to get uh, the natural overtones, a very round sound, very mellow sound. If you go below the tuning of the top head, okay, you're going to eliminate a few of the overtones. You're going to get a deeper sound and not as much attack. But the tone is going to stay consistent throughout. You know how sometimes you got a blow, blow, it falls at the end. The tone's going to be consistent throughout the decay if the top and the bottom head are tuned the same or if the bottom head is tuned lower than the, than the top head. The where you're going to get that boom, that fall that a lot of guys like on their floor tom, boom. You're going to get that by taking that bottom head and going above the top head. Okay? Then you have a change in the tone as the drum decays. That's that's it took me years to learn that. These simple things took me years to learn. Why did it take me years to learn that? Why didn't I google it? God, ah, google, you run my life. Um Now, on to the bottom head. We are going to See how this sounds. I, I really don't know how this term. I just pulled it off the shelf. Hmm. Hmm. So that needs to go up just a little bit. Now this is tuned higher than my top head. Those are all pretty okay. So whenever you hit it, you're going to have a little bit of a fall. Boom. Bow. Now I'm going to take that bottom head down. Let me take that bottom head down and show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to take it way down. We're going way down. Is that song? Down, down, na, 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 na. Sugar, we're going down swinging. You didn't know I was going to sing to you on this lesson. Well, guess what? I am going to sing to you. A little bit lower. This is the reason I haven't done this lesson because there's no really, it's always like, here's how you tune the drum. That one's a little bit lower, so I'm going up. Okay, now. You get more of a consistent sound. Bow, bow, instead of a bow, bow. That's how you tune the drum. That's, it needs to stay on the stand. That's how you tune the drum. Again, diagonally, I go clockwise. You can go counterclockwise if you want. Start here, go there, go here, go there, go here, go there. Okay, whichever way you start, just continue that way all the way around the drum. Um, the, now, do you tune your drums in thirds? Do you tune them in fourths? Do you just tune them how you like? This is personal preference, okay? Back to that, tuning is all personal preference. That's what's so cool about drumming. You can make your drums sound like you. So, what you wanna do is, there's several ways. A, you can get a tone that you love, and you can go from that tone from one to the other, and just hit it until you feel like they're in the same general family. That's what a lot of guys do. A lot of guys also tune in intervals, okay? If you're on a keyboard, you have intervals. So thirds would be like if you're on C, it'd be C, E, G. Those are thirds. Fourths, minor fourths, some do major thirds. They get real scientific about it does not matter what you do as long as you like it. Now, if you're going to tune in intervals, I'm gonna teach you a small part of the scale, okay? So start, this is gonna be our bass note. Do, do, re, mi, fa, so, do, so. So sol would be your top one. So, do, so, do, re, mi, Do, mi, so, mi, do. Do, mi, so, mi, do. There you have that. Or maybe you only have two toms. Do, so, do. So if you've tuned your first one, you can go so, do. That's the easiest way I can explain tuning a drum. Start, take the hoop off, put it back on in the same order that you took it off, seed the head, tighten it, get all of the lugs, in the same tone with each other and then go for the note that you want. 
again, going diagonally across from each other, either clockwise or counterclockwise around the drum until you've reached all of them. Once you do that, flip the drum over, do the bottom head. If you tune it with the top head even, it's going to again have a warm, mellow sound with the decay is gonna stay the same. If you tune it below, the decay, the decay is gonna stay the same. You're gonna take out some of the overtones of the drum and it's gonna have not as much attack, more of a low sound, more like a rock sound. If you tune that bottom head higher, that's where you're gonna get that fall off the drum. The boom, boom, because you're gonna get another sound from that bottom head. So that's where you're gonna get the, the, the sound and uh, minimizes a little of the overtones, but not much you're gonna get a lot more attack on that type of tuning. Then when it gets to tuning in intervals, you can tune to your ear or you can tune to major thirds, minor fourths, however you want to. What I encourage you to do is when you get your drums tuned, either take your iPhone or some kind of recorder and record what they sound low. Go around the toms, boom, 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 boom. Get a recording of it, then whenever you need to replace the head, you take out your recording and go boom, hmm, get one lug, one lug on that drum to sound like that, hmm, and you found it. Then go to the others. My biggest thing with this is I wanna eliminate fear. You really have to sit down just the same way you have to sit down and practice the drums, you gotta sit down and practice tuning, especially when you get a new set of drums, okay? There's different types of woods, there's all, we can, we can get real in depth with tuning, but this is the general overview of how to tune a drum and how to make your drums sound congruent with each other. Okay, it's all about the ear. That's what's so cool about the drums is we can make them sound like us. I hope that helps. Shoot any questions to me you have. And if this was not the information you were wanting, I'm sorry, this is why I have not done a tuning video because there's eight gazillion people with eight gazillion opinions about how to do it. Hopefully this helps and hopefully I can help you find your right sound for the drum kit.